uh, wandering author here reminding you that we are all the authors of our own lives. As always, my message remains the same. Spend less, live more, earn your freedom with frugality. Today we are in Fountain, Colorado, and we're going to continue talking about the latter half of Augustus's reign. So, the Res Geste Divi Augusti records Octavian's achievements as the Divine Augustus on the Temple of Rome in Ankara, Turkey. Most of it was uh, devoted to work, bread, and show, bread and circuses. It records that more than half of the state's annual revenues were devoted to the military. Remember, the army is personally loyal to the emperor himself now at this point, no longer the state of Rome. <coughs> now, all of this military spending did open avenues of advancement in the legions and auxiliaries, uh, but only for those who were loyal to the emperor. His generosity helped to fuel the army as they expanded the borders of the empire to the greatest heights um, they ever knew. You know, in the last 50 years of, uh, in a 50 year period from 450 BC, from, they doubled the size of the empire. <coughs> now, um, Augustus wasn't the first to make military such an important part of the uh, culture in Rome. You know, if you remember Marius, Sola, Pompey, and Caesar, and of course Octavian and Mark Antony, and in the populism in general of the late Republic, had made war a necessity to spend to, to pay for all of this spending on all of the magnificent public works projects that are occurring throughout the empire at this time. <coughs> they needed lots of booty uh, for more. You know, Virgil, the ancient poet, once uh, said that Rome was on a mission to rule the world, and paying for it would require sustained violence. Uh, by 7 BC, Octavian would double the uh, empire size, heralding the dawn of the Augustan age. In the Arapasus, or the Forum of Augustus, we could see a rich heritage from this time period. Uh, he would portray himself as reincarnations of Romulus and Aeneas, the mythic founders of Rome and Troy. Now, deification of Roman rulers is no strange topic, uh, especially to the people at the time. You know, back then, not everybody could write, and the main way that you would transmit history was through oral storytelling. It's how we got the origins of the Bible, and all of really ancient history <coughs> was transmitted as oral stories first. Uh, however, the really, the, the really serious turning point for Octavian and Augustus was he deified himself, uh, marking a significant departure from the past. You know, most of Roman citizens, they would uh, transmute their leaders to uh, deities after they died. Uh, but again, despite Augustus' self-proclaimed divinity, it's around this time that certain holes also begin appearing in the imperial defenses. Uh, one of the most famous examples is the Lost Legions of Teotuberg Forest. So, this was uh, on the German frontier. Augustus appointed Varus, uh, who is an inexperienced uh, man when it comes to military matters, but loyal to the Emperor, so he got the green light. Uh, during the Balkan Wars, brave and valiant, you know, and... Um, Full of the emperor's blessings, Quintus Villus, or Quintilus Varus led three full legions, about 25,000 men, across the Rhine and deep into barbarian territory. <clears throat> While they were there, they were ambushed and completely annihilated to the man by German barbarians. And their annihilation represented the loss of one-tenth of the entire empire's military forces at this time. Talk about decimation. Uh, it also, so news of this did more than just break the hearts of all the families that lost their uh, husbands and fathers in the forest. Back home uh, in Italy, it also shattered the aura of invincibility that Augustus had um, donned once he became emperor after the Civil War's conclusion. You know, and... Uh, at this point, Augustus is starting to realize that they are spending too much and that reducing money on military spending is paramount. Uh, but, you know, these reductions in spending also led to glaring holes in Rome's defenses. However, uh, Arminius of the Germans was happy to escape taxes and dismanded his warriors after Teotuberg Forest. Um, but the message was clear. 
Augustus would halt all offensive operations shortly afterward, a policy maintained by his successor Tiberius. This was a pivotal moment. Rome was a society built on offense from the time of the Etruscans. The Roman people maintained a near constant war footing, so on the surface this was nothing new to them. They had grown accustomed to war, but now the posture changed. 89 AD 9, uh, the year 9, was the high point for Rome, and from that year on things looked grim. Rome's transition from a democracy to an empire mirrors what we've seen in countless other times in history. Read through strong men, come in during times of turmoil, overtake the state, and offer the people a glimmer of stability. And uh, like most of us would struggle to avoid, they latch on. So what's more intriguing to me is how we can look back at this knowing the empire will fall. You know, to the people at the time, Augustus seemed truly divine because the empire had gone through three rounds of civil wars and on the surface it appeared to be more powerful than ever in just a couple of years. Uh, but, you know, Octavian, the first divine Augustus, would hand over the reins of the empire to Tiberius, believing it would be eternal. However, it's during the Julio-Claudian dynasty that we first see the cracks start to appear. Power is never absolute, even for an emperor. Uh, so what are you guys doing in order to inspire, uplift, and empower your local community today? Because this world isn't changing unless we all do our part, and you can count on me to do mine daily. Until next time, this is Wondering Author, reminding you that we are all the authors of our own lives. Love you guys. God bless.